Good morning, how are you? Yeah, are you able to check the one big to request? I'll try to check. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. Testing one. Testing one, two. <coughs> All right. Hello, you've managed to log in? You are able to get me. Sorry? All right, thank you.
All right. I can uh, start if everyone is uh, logged in. And today we are going to look at uh, the last example, which is um, electric field intensity due to a volume charge. Remember, we had uh, looked at the first example, which was to do with uh, an infinite, an infinite line charge. We looked at the second example, which was um, to do with a charged ring. Then we also looked at the charge surface and also now we are looking at a charged volume. So we have done that, we've looked at that, we have looked at that and today we shall begin by looking at the volume charge all right <clears throat> so what we are trying to do is to find how we can actually calculate the we have to calculate the electric field intensity for any given scenario like uh, for example a different line charge the charge ring the charge surface or a plate and the charge volume how do we do the calculations that's what is very very important so we have to know how we are supposed to do the calculations we have to know how we pick the small elements and then make them uh, integrate so that we are able to actually drive equations and able to come to the electric field intensity expressions that we need all right Okay, having said that, let's go straight to what we need to look at for today. And this is the volume chart. How do we calculate the electric intensity for a volume chart? So like you remember very well when we started, we had looked at an infinite line charge and we looked at the we looked at the charged ring so the calculation is actually the same remember what we're doing we we just followed the same steps the first step that we had to do is to actually pick a small uh, fraction of that particular uh, uh, element that we have we picked for example we had picked the dl and also we had picked the da which was the area the dl was a small length then we also picked um, the DA, which was an area in, on the surface. Now we have the volume. So in the volume, we'll have to pick what is called the DV. Then we are going to get a small volume of that particular sphere. And then from there, we are able to uh, see to it that when we do the integration, we are able to get the whole derivation of the, of the sphere. I think that is what we are looking at. All right. Okay, let's put up the diagram and see what we are looking at. So this is our sphere that we are saying this sphere is charged. Then we take that to be our origin. We have our Z axis there. Then we have our Y axis. In this side, we have our X axis. Then, what is happening is that we are picking a small 
volume here, which of course we are calling uh, the DV, in other words. Then, as usual, we pick a small point on the z-axis, which is what we normally call point P in our previous examples. We shall use the same P so that we are not uh, confused. Then from there, we know that if we pick this small dv here, we have to see how much intensity comes from this small volume that we've cut when we are seated at point P with respect to this uh, uh, small volume. So we can easily put a small dotted line there and then from there now we need now to have also the distance from the origin to where that small volume is then we have to bring it down so that we are able to calculate its relationship on the x y plane because we know the z plane is actually the p that we have gotten then we have to bring this down so that we see how it cutters in the in the x y z the displacements in the x and in the y direction now so we are going to call this uh, displacement here that is what we are calling the phi then this displacement we are calling it uh, theta of course this distance from there up to here we shall call it the vector r whereas this becomes our alpha then of course in this direction that's where we have the e which is the small electric field intensity as a result of this small volume that we've cut in this section right then from there now we we'll have also the DE in the direction of Z. Alright, so this point P, of course we know that the point P is at 0, 0, 0, Z. In other words, the only displacement is in the Z direction. That's why point P, we can call it P or it's the same as uh, Z displacement. Now, that's why from here up to there, we can just say this is Z, which is the Z displacement. Now, um, what we have, the remember when we we're looking at the line, we had looked at the line uh, charge density, then uh, we looked at the surface, we looked at the surface charge density of the material. Now that we are looking at the volume, we look at the volume charge density. So you shouldn't confuse those three. The row is just the charge density and the subscript is just making sure that we know what we are talking about. Whether we are talking about the line, whether we are talking about uh, the surface, which is the charge plate, or whether we are talking about the volume, which is actually what we are talking about here. So this is the volume charge density as we have mentioned it. Now, after describing this diagram in that way and putting some you know, components which uh, we have put in place, so we have to define. So we are saying that uh, let this be equal to the volume charge density. That is our volume charge density. Then we, what we have is that, so now we consider an element, and this element uh, is an element uh, of volume dv which is this one here. This is what we are saying, this is V. 
and then it means that so that's the charge which is inside this small volume which we shall call dq it means that this charge dq must be equal to the volume charge density multiplied by dv that is critical now the electric the electric intensity that is outside of course this is outside the sphere at any point and this point is the point we are calling P which is situated at 0, 0, 0,0, Z which is this point here and this is due to dq which is the charge which is embedded in this small volume that we have so the electric field intensity which is the e as a result of the dq which is coming from the small element dv is given by so we are saying is given by this is given by the e which is this one here as a result of this component is equal to remember we have our dq there over our constant 4 by epsilon 0 multiplied by r squared so that of course we have to multiply by the unit vector ar in the direction of a then <coughs> this gives us of course this we know that is here we make this replacement where there is the q we put the charge density multiplied by the small volume dv so we are saying this is the same as the volume charge density multiplied by dv all this divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 into r squared of a r like that excuse me All right, sorry for that uh, disturbance. Let's continue. So what I was saying is that uh, we have made a replacement where there is the Q. We have replaced it by the volume charge density multiplied by the V, which now uh, gives us this form of the electric charge density. <coughs> All right, so now we need to so we need to resolve this uh, we need to resolve the e into 
three orthogonal components. Of course, these are which are the E in the X direction, the E in the Y direction, and also uh, the E in the Z direction. Now, because of symmetry, because of symmetry, let me just put the diagram here. Imagine this is our XY plane, this is our Z direction, this is Y, this is X, so our point P is here, this is P, which we are calling uh, 0, 0, 0, Z. So what we are trying to say here is that, remember very well that from this volume that we have here, we have this, which we are calling the DE. Now, this DE has components in the X and in the Y direction. So what is happening is that since these are on the surface, X and Y are on the surface, it means that all the components of the DE in the X will be actually will cancel, will be equal to say minus DE in the Y or the opposite of that. So it means that the, these two components of Y and X will cancel each other and will only remain with the component of the E in the Z direction, which is what we have put on top here. This is the component that is going to survive. Due to symmetry, X and Y will cancel each other, all these components will vanish, and will only remain with the E Z. That is very, very important for you to take note. All right, so let's continue. We'll leave our diagram there for future reference. So, now, so what we are saying is that this means the component, the components, the E in the X and the E in the Y direction, actually equal to zero. So, thus, the electric field intensity, which is thus the component, which is the DE, along, of course, along the z-axis, this becomes this becomes the E in the Z axis must be equal to the E then multiplied by the cosine of alpha, which is the this angle here, which is alpha, the angle that is in between there. So this is the only contribution that we have that is going to contribute to the total uh, intensity. Right. Okay, moving forward, let's uh, see how now we can uh, move from the, this is a small element as a result of dv. Now we want to see how we can move from this small element to the entire sphere that we have and see the total charge that we are going to get from there. Right. Right? 
having said that, now we are saying, therefore the total, the, that's the total intensity at point P is given by, this becomes EZ, which must be equal to the integral, remember from our definition of DE, this is the volume density multiplied by the small volume, which is dV. All this we divide by our constant, 4 pi epsilon 0 multiplied by R squared. This we are multiplied by the cosine of alpha. So that, if we try to solve that integral, what we have is that this is a constant, the volume charge density is a constant, 4 pi epsilon 0 is also a constant, so we remove them outside, that becomes uh, the, the volume charge density divided by 4 pi epsilon 0, we factor them out of the integral, then from there what we remain with is dV cosine of alpha, all of this divided by R squared. Let that be our equation one. We shall get back to that equation. Let's see how we can bring in the components. Because now we have to move now to the spherical coordinates. All right, so in spherical coordinates, this is very important at this stage, you have to now move from this uh, the Cartesian plane, because what we are looking at now is the sphere, which is a volume. So we now need to move from the, uh, this, our common Cartesian plane into spherical coordinates. So we have to take note of that. So what we are saying is that, in uh, spherical coordinates, this volume, which we are calling dV, is the same as R sine of theta multiplied by the theta. Sorry, this is defined into R dot the theta. All this multiplied by R. So we call this equation 2. So this small volume is the same as when we transform this into uh, spherical coordinates. Instead of just writing this dV, remember very well from the, from the diagram, we know that if you check on the right side of uh, the, the diagram, this dV is actually at uh, this is r comma theta comma phi. So this dv is a function of the radius. So it is defined as the radius, which is this r from here up to there. Then it's also defined by the angle theta. It's affected by that. Then it's also affected by the angle phi, which is in that direction. So that's why this dv is actually settles on R, theta, and phi. These three components are the ones that define the position of this in terms of the spherical coordinates. All right. So having said that, we can now easily move to our next step. So we are saying, uh, from here, we know that uh, from the cosine rule, which we all know from uh, high school, the cosine rule, what we have is that the cosine of theta must be equal to z squared plus r squared, all this minus r squared divided by 2zr. And then the cosine, these we can prove them from here, 
If you get this triangle and use cosine rule, we have phi, which is here. This side we have r, this side we have small r, this side we have z. So you can easily pick it up by saying this is our triangle that we are talking about here. This is our theta, that is our origin, this is our point P, that is where we have our dv. It means that this is our phi, so the distance here up to there is what we are calling z. This distance from there up to there is what we are calling r, and then this is what we are calling the small r. So if you use cosine rule, you are able to actually come up with that so easily. So you can say the cosine rule gives you the cosine of theta must be equal to z squared plus r squared plus minus uh, minus uh, plus r squared minus r squared. Then you divide all this by two z r. It's the same as the equation that you you know very well, where you say if this if we are talking about this side. This becomes our A, then this becomes our B, then this becomes our C. Where you say, is it the cosine of theta must be equal to A squared plus B squared minus C squared over 2AC. That is where all this is coming from. All right, so of course that is high school stuff. I don't need to get into the details of that. You just need to remind yourself of the cosine and the sine rules. All right, so it means that immediately what we have is that the cosine of alpha now must be equal to z squared plus r squared plus, I mean, minus r small r squared. All this, we have to divide it by 2 z capital R. So that is how we are that is how we define that from the cosine rule now we can take down the, the diagram because what is remaining at this point is entire mathematics the physics ends at that point and then we start making replacements so now the first thing that we need to do is we have to differentiate those uh, equations that we are just from writing. If we, we differentiate, so we are saying by differentiating, so we get what we get is that minus sine of theta. If you differentiate cosine theta, you know for sure that what you get is minus sine theta. Of course, this becomes d theta must be equal to minus 2r multiplied by the r, or this divided by 2z into small r. Of course, uh, this is, we've done this by keeping z and r fixed. That is how we've done that. Now, the implication here is that this implies that the sine of theta now, dot theta, is equal to r, all this multiplied by the r divided by 2r. Now, this means, this implies that Equation 2, remember, our equation 2 is here, this equation now. So we want to make replacements. So it means that this equation now becomes, so equation 2 becomes dv, because we are looking for the expression for dv, which is what we are supposed to replace in equation 1. This is what we are trying to do. So now dv becomes r squared multiplied by the phi. All this we multiply it into r dot the r over 2r <coughs> multiplied by the r. Right. 
So now, all this, now that we have found the explicit expression of dv, so the right hand side of this equation is what we now get and plug into equation one. Then we continue with our integral. So we bring all this must come now and replace this component here. That is our dv. So this r squared defined multiplied by r of the r over 2 r into the r. All this must come into this integral. Then from there we can find our final solution that we are looking for. Okay, let's continue. saying uh, putting dv into uh, equation 1 so we get the following this of course we say this is Ez which is the component of electric field intensity in the z direction remember we had mentioned that the x and y because of symmetry they cancel each other and the only contribution is from the z uh, direction. Now, what we have is that this z must be equal to the volume charge density multiplied by our constant, 4 by epsilon 0, into dv. Of course, we have cosine alpha there divided by r squared. Now, this implies that Ez now must read as follows. The volume charge density multiplied by 4 pi, I mean divided by 4 pi epsilon 0. First of all, we have to do the first integral. And our first integral is, remember, we have, let me just remove this, just to remind you where we are coming from. Remember that we have our sphere like this, then we have our origin there, x, y plane. This is our x, y, and this is our z. Remember we had picked this as our small volume, then when we dropped it like this, we had such an arrangement. This is what we called the alpha, this is what we called the beta, and this is the pi. So, if you look at how the phi is moving, it means that it is just moving on the surface, like this. So that's why we have to integrate it from 0 to 2 pi. In other words, it can only move up to, uh, just on the surface, it can only move around like this. So we are integrating phi. This phi starts from 0 up to 2 pi. Then from there, also we are looking at the R which is the capital R starting from zero. This R is what we have from this point, which is the V to point P. This point, of course, it starts from zero up to a maximum of, sorry, this is a small R, just a moment. This is a small R, which is this distance here. That is a small R. So this small R is starting from zero, of course, from this point, it goes all the way up to the surface here. So that surface is what we are calling A, because we have assumed that the radius of this particular uh, sphere is given by A. So it means that this is moving from 0 to A. Then again, we integrate now the capital R, which is starting from Z minus R. Of course, the definition of R here is Z, which is this distance from the origin to point P, minus R gives us that, in other words. So what is there is that, for example, if you want to move to this point and you are here, 
you can say since r is in this direction you say minus r plus z or z minus r gives you that big r there from the vector analysis addition so that gives us of course r is from z minus r up to r being equal to z plus r that is if we move from this direction to to that direction it means that minus r so this is moving from r to minus r this minus r is z plus r this r is z minus r that is what is there now this of course we have applied into r squared dot d5 all this all this we have to multiply it into r the r capital over z multiplied by r into R, then this we multiply it into z squared plus r squared minus r squared all this divided by 2 z r and then we multiply 1 over r squared like that so we have now to reduce that we have three integrals so the next thing that we do is to reduce this right hand side which is we have the volume there, volume charge density divided by our constant. Then we have the phi, which is equal to zero, into phi. Then this, of course, is moving from zero into A. The third integral is R being equal to Z minus R into R being equal to Z plus R. Then this is R and phi goes into the R, so we are trying to reduce all this component there by compressing it. Then from there now we have that is R defined, then the R multiplied by multiplied by the R here. Then all this component we multiply it by Z squared plus R squared minus R squared, all this divided by 2 z squared r squared so we have again now to see how we can manipulate this component as well so that we reduce it into a more uh, simpler form that we are able to integrate without difficulties Okay, soon we had some uh, network interruption. Uh, sorry for that uh, disturbance. I think the network had, uh, had gone somehow. So we continue. So the implication is that EZ now must be equal to, of course, our constant, which is outside rho V four pi psilon zero into five being equal to zero, two pi 
Of course, we have R being equal to 0 into A, into R being equal to Z minus R into Z plus R. All this we have R, R defined into the R multiplied by R squared. All this multiplied by 1 plus. So you are factorizing the R squared there into Z squared minus R squared over R squared, all this we divide it by 2 z squared r squared. Okay, this implies that Ez now can be written as the volume charge density 8 pi psilon 0 into z squared. All this phi must be equal to 0 going to 2 pi of the phi and then we integrate r from 0 to a into r then we are integrating big r which is equal to z minus r into z plus r so this is 1 plus z squared minus r squared over r squared all this we multiply it into the r then the r small r. So the implication of course here is that the ez must be equal to ez must be equal to the volume charge density over 4 over 8. This is 8 now because we have integrated this as the r which has come to the other side. So we have we have now to multiply this is one and a half. Not that we have integrated this, but this we have factored out this two here to move it out of the integral to multiply this four, which is here. So that that's why now we are having eight, and we've just left the z squared and r squared on the other side, and then we did some few manipulation there. So now this is eight pi seven zero into z squared, of course we are integrating phi from 0 to 2 pi into the phi, then we are integrating, sorry, uh, now we are supposed to be on the next step, this is the step that we have already uh, looked at, so this we multiply straight away by 2 pi, if you do this here, what you get is that if you differentiate, if you integrate the, the phi, what you get is phi, then the difference here is 2 pi minus 0, which is just 2 pi here. So this component, this becomes that. And then from there, we now integrate r, which is from 0 to a of r into r minus z squared minus r squared over are here, all this into z minus r into z plus r. Of course, this gives us the r. Now, if we move on from there, so moving on from there. What we see now is that this implies that Ez must be equal to the volume charge density divided by 4 epsilon 0 at z squared or with uh, r into 0 up to a into 4 r squared dot dr. Simple as that. So the implication here is that Ez now must be equal to 
the volume charge density divided by 4, epsilon 0, into z squared. The 4 comes outside, it's a constant, into r to the 3 over 3. All this we are integrating from 0 to a, which is the same as that, epsilon 0 into z squared. Of course, here we have a to the 3 over 3, like that. Right, so remember very well that we have to note here to say uh, this volume charge density is the same as charge divided by volume. So this we can write it as the charge, the volume of a sphere by definition is given by 4 over 3 into pi a to the 3, where A is the radius of the sphere. It's very, very important for us to take note of that. All right. Now, since we have noted that, we can easily replace where there is this charge, volume charge density, we can replace it by that. So, the implication here now is that E Z must be equal to 3q over 4 pi a to the 3. All this we are multiplying by 1 over sine of 0 z squared multiplied by a to the 3 over 3. So reducing that implies that a z must be equal to the charge divided by the 4 pi epsilon 0 into z squared. So this is your final solution that we are looking for. So in vector form, you can easily write that like that, or then you can put it in vector form. So the vector form is just to multiply a unit vector in front then you are able to, to write that in vector form, that's the difference. So what we are saying is that in vector form, in vector form, what we have, what we have is that this E in the Z direction must be the same as the charge, the total charge, which is on that sphere divided by the constant 4 pi epsilon 0 multiplied by the z squared. That is our distance from the origin to point P. You square it, multiplied by A in the z direction, which is the unit vector in the z direction. So this is how you write it in the vector form. All right. So we are supposed to continue, but I'm supposed to introduce the next topic, which is electric flux. So since we are from driving a very long derivation um, for the idea that we start with this electric flux this afternoon at 14 hours. So for now, we shall end our class this morning. And when we come back at 14 hours, we'll continue from this electric flux. I still uh, remind you to submit your assignment, assignment two, is ready and you may receive it by the end of today. You check your Moodle and I'm yet to receive assignment one. Only one has submitted so far. So I'm still waiting for assignment one. So we shall meet in the afternoon and wish you a blessed day. Goodbye.